Hey everyone, it's Rich Bracken from Kansas City coming to you live, kind of live, presenting for the LMA Mid-Atlantic Conference. I'm so excited to be a part of this conference. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there, but I wanted to make sure that I got you this content because I have some tips and tricks on how you can utilize social media and content marketing to generate business. All the content that we're gonna give you is fantastic, but today in this piece, I'm gonna give you several things that are gonna help you churn out additional content save time in producing content, and also maximize your attorney's time because all of our attorneys are strapped for time and their time is money. So if you're going to use them for content creation and business generation, you gotta make sure that it's worth it. So let's get into the tips. So before you get started on your content marketing journey, you need to do a few things to get started and make sure that you've got a good plan laid out before you just go haphazardly wandering into this water. First of all, you need to take inventory of the different resources and software that you have available. That is the key to making sure that all of these things go right. Your content editor, any graphics editors, video editing, audio editing, all of the different software that you could possibly need. Those are the things you need to make sure that you have. Now, if you have a team of experts that can use this kind of software, fantastic, you're ahead of the game. But there are so many different options out there now of free software or very user-friendly software that even the most novice of individual with a couple of short lessons can get really comfortable with really quickly. Knowledge of these platforms and software options are gonna make this tremendously easy to turn content as quickly as possible. Gone are the days that we need to rely just on e-alerts and sending out e-blasts. There's all kinds of things we're gonna walk through as far as software and content distribution that you're gonna to need to know and get ramped up on. Two, when you get into building this team and building this strategy, make sure that you have the right people on the team that have the bandwidth and the know-how and the interest to take on these tasks because these are gonna become more high demand, a little bit more involved. So you need to look at the team and see who's got the availability to do these kinds of things. Figure out who's got the time to take on the new training and use the software programs and dedicate the time to putting out consistent content. That's gonna be key because the last thing you wanna do is overstrap your already tired team with new things and new tasks to go do. Next, and probably one of the most critical things is that you need to make sure that you've identified a team of contributors, people that are gonna have the time to write the content, to create it on a consistent basis. Now, this is gonna come from your attorneys because typically the business development and marketing team aren't in charge of actually writing the content. So make sure that you've got buy-in from your attorneys that are going to be interested in doing this. They're gonna have the ability to create content. Even if you have to create a roster, make sure that you've got a team assigned to the different kinds of content that you wanna put out, whether they're e-alerts, podcasts, videos, white papers, what have you. But make sure that you have the people interested in creating the content and make sure that you're a couple of deep on every kind of law just in case your top option is a little tied up on a matter. Next, make sure you've got a plan. A shocking statistic from LinkedIn is that only 37% of marketers have a documented content marketing plan. So if you don't have a plan, you might as well plan to fail. Because as you're getting into this, you need to have all kinds of structure around this. This isn't just something you wanna just haphazardly do, as I mentioned earlier. You need to have a focused strategy, a focused content plan that you can act on and that you can measure. And within that plan, an editorial calendar is one of the most critical and most overlooked pieces that you have to have installed with your new content marketing plan and strategy. An editorial calendar will help you build the content that you need to build for your market. Now, a lot of law firms are in the breaking news business. They wanna get content out within 24 hours to show their clients and their prospects that they can break the news first, that they can give you the content first. But when you have an editorial calendar built, you're more in a, re a proactive stance as opposed to a reactive stance. So if you can build an editorial calendar, that helps you plan out your content in advance keeps attorneys on due dates, and sets expectations for the content moving forward. Because nothing's worse than having a bunch of content and then having it go dry for a while. Maybe your attorneys get too busy. Maybe they don't think about it. It's not a priority. And so therefore, you run into these stalls of content. With content marketing, the number one thing is that you have to be consistent. You have to have consistent content coming out from your firm as much as possible. And we'll get into how you can do that later on, but this is a key, key factor build an editorial calendar. And if you've never built an editorial calendar, there are plenty of resources out there to help you get started. LinkedIn, 
HubSpot, Marketo all have wonderful templates and there are plenty of them out there. Those are the top three that I go to all the time for content and they have great templates for editorial calendars. So leverage these resources, find the template that works best for you, find one that is multi-purpose or multidisciplinary that you can color code so that you make sure that you have the right content going out, you identify the platforms that you're using and you can keep all of that in front of you. Always be prepared for the discussion about getting business through social media and through content marketing because you're going to have pushback, you're going to have naysayers, you're going to have those that don't believe in the power of marketing. One of the statistics that you can use in your defense is that 43% of marketers, according to HubSpot, have brought in new business thanks to social media content. And who doesn't love successful statistics? Say that five times really fast right now. So now that you've got your plan and your calendar and everything else built out, the foundation is set. Now it's time to go out and create the content and leverage it as much as possible. So we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics, unpacking your content. Now I am a huge believer in saving time, working smarter and not harder, and hopefully all of you are as well. And so we're gonna walk through a content idea called unpacking your content. My good friend Spencer X. Smith taught me this trick a couple of years ago, and it has been incredibly impactful in regenerating content, making the time as valuable as possible, and you get so many different pieces. So if you can take an hour to build content, one hour, you can create 10 pieces of content out of that one hour of content. And from there, you can reuse those pieces of content over and over again in multi-platform use and also within the same channels, because if you don't wanna post one piece of content one time and then let it disappear. Use that content over and over to increase your visibility and increase the circulation on platforms like LinkedIn, JD Supra, and others. So what is unpacking content? Unpacking content is the best use of your time, period. Let's use an example of a video as your first piece of content because that's where you're gonna get the most value in creating sub-content from there. So let's take for an example an internal CLE or maybe a video that your attorney wants to create about a topic that they're extremely passionate about. The video doesn't have to be incredibly long, it's just the content that you're going to take, dissect, and reuse over and over again that makes the most impact. And while video may be very intimidating to a lot of people, you take videos almost every single day on your phone. Those are the kind of videos that are going to be just fine to reuse content from. You don't have to have a big professional Hollywood studio. You don't have to have a very expensive camera. You can use the high quality camera on your phone or on a point and shoot camera to use that content to reuse over and over again. So you've got the full size video that's been edited down as much as possible to get in within the hour. You've also got the smaller snippets of video, one to three minutes a piece. So you've got two levels of content. So now what can you do with that video content? If the presenter is visible during the video, you can take snapshots or screen grabs of that individual presenting, especially if there's a room full of people, whether it's clients, prospects, stand-in actors. That is a really good way to take those photos and combine them with the title and the presenter's name. Get them out on Twitter, get them on LinkedIn, show the picture of the presenter, the title of the content, and a couple of takeaways. That brings more notoriety to the attorney while also maximizing the time and the exposure that they can get out of that one hour of content. Now you can also remove the audio for another piece of content. You can create a podcast from this presentation. So what I recommend is taking the audio, creating a static visual, so it's a graphic that's got the attorney's picture, their contact information, the title of the presentation, and the website of the firm, all branded, of course, to make sure that you're keeping in line with brand guidelines. But by putting that content on YouTube, if you've got a podcast platform that you, that you use, like SoundCloud, or you can even put it on Vimeo as another video option, but also put it on your website. Put that content on your website and then also leverage your aggregators like JD Supra and others that you can post podcast content directly on the aggregator. Again, multiple opportunities to leverage a podcast. You can also take those shorter videos that you created earlier, strip the audio from them. You've already got sound bites that you can post out on social media with the contact information of the attorney, the graphic, whatever you, whatever you wanna put on this, but you can also now leverage that. So the smaller videos have two purposes as well. And we're not done there by a long shot. If there are things that the attorney says during the presentation, some really punctual statements or a, a thought or a, some sort of a, a wrap up that really talks about the impact of their presentation to the industry that they're representing, take one line or take a quote from that podcast or take a quote from a video, create a graphic quote. So it's the attorney's face, uh, maybe some branding elements to the right, and then put the text of the quote over top. Again, another 
piece of content that you can create from this video. There are tons of other ways to use this content, but you really need to figure out what platforms are best for you, where you're getting the most traction, and what kind of message you're trying to push out. Here are some other examples of ways that you can leverage the, the video content or other content to use it more effectively and to repurpose the content over and over again. If you'd like to talk about any of these, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Would love to set up some time to discuss all the different strategies that I've used in the past, and some of the lessons that I've learned through testing and trying these different methods. So if you're not already connected with me on LinkedIn, make sure that you find me sometime today and then stay tuned later on and we're gonna show you a phenomenal new trick on using LinkedIn's QR codes to help maximize your connections and your networking through LinkedIn. So now you're a marketing genius, right? You've now brought all kinds of ROI to your marketing department and your communication strategy because you've learned how to unpack content. You've learned how to take one piece of large content, slice and dice it up, and come up with a whole bunch of different pieces of content. Now.